Hey guys, I'm back again, um, but I'm in my very own workshop now. I've moved into my own place and uh, been here a couple of weeks and set up shop. So uh, I'm super excited about it all. Like I can put anything where I want. I can put holes in that wall. I can like drill stuff into the concrete. So it's pretty sick. Um, anyway, so I've been playing heaps with my 3D printer. I'm going to show you some stuff about that. But the main aspect of this video is about air compressors. I bought a silent air compressor and I'm going to compare it with the one that I bought from Bunnings which is just your typical Chinese one and yeah, just uh, update you on that sort of side of compressor stuff because uh, I think it's something that is pretty, pretty crucial to the home workshop and uh, for me it's crucial not to annoy the neighbours again so we'll do a bit of a decibel test and um, yeah, compare. So I hope you like it. Let's get started. I also got this lathe tool, I can't forget about that, that's uh, my new addition too, so I'm, I'm having a lot of fun on that, but I already burnt out the capacitor and the motor I think, so we'll touch on that later. Rightio, well here are my two air compressors, uh, this is my first one that I've had for quite a while now, I bought it from Bunnings Warehouse, it cost me $200, it's a 2.5 horsepower motor, can deliver 114 litres per minute of air, and it has a 40 litre tank. And um, this is the Chicago air compressor, which is very similar to the, uh, the California Air Tools uh, silent air compressors. Um, it has two compressors on there, a uh, total power consumption of 2.2 horsepower, so it's less, less power than that one. can deliver air at 214 litres per minute, has a 50 litre tank, it cost me $630 shipped to my house from Sydney. So it's three times more expensive than that one, but as claimed on the advert, it is uh, 55 decibels. So that's really why I went and bought that one, because I want it quiet. Uh, I don't want to annoy the neighbors any more than I have. So I'm gonna run both, and just using a DB app on my phone, we'll get the values and see if they're comparable to the advertisement of 55 dB but um, yeah this isn't really a calibrated method or anything but if you downloaded the same map you could get an idea of uh, just how much quieter there is so yeah let's go ahead and uh, measure okay Bunnings compressor <laughs> Got a 96 decibel peak for that one, I believe. And we'll do the Chicago Air next. Okay, Chicago Air. <laughs> noticed 85 decibel is significantly higher than 55 decibels but um, I think we can put that down to this is not a calibrated device and I have a feeling that that DB rating might just be for the one for a single compressor on the tank um, but we can't really be sure it's at a level where I probably don't have to wear ear protection I'm quite comfortable not to um, but it is significantly better than the cheap Bunnings one, which just hammers at my brain. That makes me want to like flip, flip everything I can get my hands on. So I think money well spent. I'll probably keep it for the rest of my life. They're oil-free compressors as well, so maintenance is almost nil. Um, one big problem I noticed was that there's no water drain valve on the aluminium tank. Um, so, yeah, water could be an issue at some point in the future, but um, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Uh, well, the bridge will break, and we'll just fall on the water and die. But um, yeah, so I hope this video was sort of a bit of an insight into um, compressors.
addresses because get onto it. They're, they're quite useful things. And you know, you could spend a bit more and get something really good and keep it for the rest of your life in your workshop. And it won't just be that annoying thing that you just paid a cheap amount for and, um, and hate with all of your body. You just want to like throw it. So, yeah. Okay, guys, um, I'll check back in soon. Actually, I'm going to throw show you some 3D printed stuff. I've got about that. So, we'll just um, want to show you that really quick and then I'll go. So, yeah, with that 3D printer, I've been printing a lot of stuff. Um, and these are some of um, my creations. These are uh, just modules that slide onto a, a DIN rail um, for circuit breakers and things like that. Uh, so you just, I just print a single one and slide it on and they act as storage for my Tormac tooling system. And uh, brilliant, yeah, just freed up a lot of space in my garage so I can put um, other things where they were. But yeah, really quite happy with that. Um, I've got a Thingiverse account online, so just check out Crud Bucket on there if you want to download them and print some for yourself. What else have I got here? I've also printed this rack for my new um, Scorpion drivers. I'm pretty stoked with that. Got like a nice conical seat in there for the tool to rest on. And on my lathe here, I've um, printed just some um, tool holders and stuff, you know. For Chuck keys and yeah, all my tapered stuff. So that printer is just so much fun. Um, that's about it for this video. Next time I'm going to be covering. Uh, I'm going to remake my power drawbar mounting, um, and I'm going to do just video the crap out of everything so you'll see it from a build to complete. So it'll be a bit of mill, bit of lathe, bit of everything in there. So it'll be fun. But it's a couple of weeks away yet, so stay tuned and uh, yeah, love to hear what you think, even if it's bad, even if you think it's horrible. So, okay, catch you guys next time.